Hi ladies, so it's Aoife again back from womenshealthdublin.ie. Just wanted to have a quick little chat about something that's come up a few times this week, funnily enough, and that's maternity hospitals and the options of going public, private or semi-private. So I had a couple of patients had come in kind of middle of their pregnancies, just saying they weren't sure which way to go and that they'd gone semi-private or private or whatever. And then uh, also in work, out of about 12 of us in the practice, there is five of us pregnant. So all these COVID babies. And uh, we just got in a chat about it. One of the doctors is going private and I'm going public. And one of the other doctors was just asking us, you know, what the difference was and what we would recommend. And we kind of had different opinions. Um, so yeah, it just got me thinking like, you know, it wouldn't be a bad post to have up here just for people who are trying to conceive or just early pregnancy, trying to decide which to choose, uh, or maybe you've already gone public or private in the past and you're on number two or three or four or five and you're thinking, you know, what should I do now this time? So Obviously, there's the choices everyone's and it depends on affordability. Um, in my first pregnancy, I had taken out health insurance and I'd never had health insurance before that. Um, but I took it out because I wanted to get pregnant and I thought, God, I better have this now for my pregnancy. Um, and then we got pregnant straight away, which I wasn't expecting. And of course, my health insurance didn't cover me because you can't claim till you've been on it for a year. Um, so I had to go public or I could have gone fully private but um I didn't have five or six grand in my pocket and I thought you know what I'll just go public so I chose Hollis Street only because my sisters went there and I was born there no other reason I'm a north sider so I could have gone Rotunda and you can go cr the Coom either it doesn't really matter actually compared to other hospital systems you don't have to go in a catchment area you can just choose and I know I had a friend of mine chose the Coom because she wanted a water birth so some of the hospitals do have different policies and this I am in no way an expert on, but they do have different approaches. So I know in Hollis Street, for example, they might break your waters during pre during the labour if they haven't broken yet and they don't do that in the rotunda, I think. So when you do look into the different hospitals, there might be different policies or sometimes people are just following it because they want to go to a specific doctor or obstetrician um, that they've been recommended to. So, you know, all the hospitals do brilliant work in maternity um, and there's definitely none I would be saying anything negative about. But just in terms of my experience of going public, I then decided I wanted to go with the midwives just again the, the cues when you want to see the doctor at every appointment you could be an hour or two waiting and with the midwives you're literally in and out so there could be one or two people ahead of you so you know someone who has to get to work and um, I was going in at eight o'clock I'd be finished by nine and into work and it just for me that was just brilliant it was just the speed and not sitting there all day also, I'm a healthcare professional and I'm a bit biased completely, but I love being treated by healthcare professionals and that's not saying anything bad to doctors at all. It's just sometimes like midwives, they're, they're just so experienced in it. And of course, so are obstetricians. But if you're public, maybe you're not getting a senior doctor, you're getting a more junior doctor doing your appointments. Um, but like healthcare professionals, sometimes they have a different approach and maybe more alternative approach for example your raspberry leaf tea and my uh, midwife karma was like you know you can have dandelion tea now for your swelling and giving me advice about you know things that help ripen the cervix like the foods to eat when you're getting to the end of labor so just not your typical western medicine i suppose that they do give you a few little tips and they just seem to be so um empathetic and just like how are you and you get enough rest you get enough help at home you know and sometimes that's what you want to hear when you're 36 weeks pregnant and you feel awful um, and even tips about breastfeeding and then in all the hospitals you have access to your antenatal classes and they are run by a mix of midwives physios lactation consultants so it is that multidisciplinary team approach but um then when I obviously went into labour, I it was amazing because I just went in in the middle of the night and went straight to the delivery suite and gave birth within four hours of being there. So it was just a dream. I really pray it happens this way. 
this time because my expectations are that, you know, I never had to go onto the antenatal ward or anything. Um, so it was a very calm experience for me. Um, so I just had such a great experience with them and everyone does rave about their midwives when it comes to labour, like they really do. The difference might be then when you have to go onto the public ward versus the semi-private or private wards, like your own room is never guaranteed, you know, um, even if you're fully private, it just depends on availability. I was on a public ward and thankfully it could fit six people, but my first night there was only four of us. And I've heard of friends who've been in the more kind of private wing and they could cram six or seven people into the bay just because it's really busy. Now, my friends tell me the food is nicer on the private bay, uh, private wards. And I think the staffing numbers, like there's a bit better ratio of kind of nurses to patients. Because definitely on the public ward, and like I think in all hospitals in Ireland and the NHS and across the world, you do kind of feel like maybe you don't get very much attention. You know, you don't know where the toilet is. You're like, you know, can I go for a shower? What do I do with the baby? And you're just kind of left there a little bit. Um, So you maybe don't have that like doctor coming in to check you afterwards or that feeling like you're the most important person there, you know, because they're just so busy. Um, But when it came to now this being my second pregnancy, I decided I had health insurance, so I could have gone semi-private. If I went semi-private, then I might have had to just pay an excess of four or five hundred. Um, but it would have let me go to the semi-private clinics. Get my friends tell me they're not guaranteed seeing the same doctor at all. You know, sometimes you still go with midwives through it and then see the doctor for a few minutes, but it could be a different doctor every time. And then when you actually do give birth, you could still be just mid- the midwives and maybe one of the doctors will come in, but it's not your specific doctor. And there again, maybe the one great thing about that is getting to go to the private wing where things might be a little bit nicer. Um, for most of us, you're in there for two nights. Like if you have a section, it could be four or five nights. For me, I left after one night. So looking at it all in, I'm like, you know, that was just one day of my life. So was it that big of a deal? You know, you just get on with it. Um, so on this number two, I decided, right, I have my health insurance. My husband was like, yeah, I'll pay the extra 500. You deserve it. And I thought, you know what? I want to go public. I know what public's like. I was really happy with it. Um, and there's not a lot I'd change. And this time, hopefully, when I'm in the ward afterwards, I kind of know what I'm doing a bit more. So I won't just lie there going, oh, my God, help, help. Um, so I might hopefully need that much attention. But, you know, if you are public and you have a problem, like if you're high risk or there's gestational diabetes or anything, you are treated so well. You know, it's not that you fall through the cracks or anything. Um, and then I was just thinking myself in over Christmas when I went to do my gestational diabetes test, like they were so on the ball, oh, you should do the test because your baby was big and you'd mild PCOS. So, you know, you could, there could be a risk factor there, came in and did it, no waiting around, left. Then they said, please ring tomorrow. They rang me. I was literally about to ring them. They ring me. Like, it was just so good. I was like, oh my God, having worked in public sessions, I was like, this is just run so well and so smoothly. And like, it's really sad during COVID that dads aren't let in, especially for first time mums. Like, I get that. But it is nice being in a waiting room that is not packed and not full of men and men sitting down on their phones while you're eight months pregnant standing against a wall, you know. So there is a calmness in there in a weird way because of COVID, just less people. And maybe they're just trying to stick to their appointment times more. I have just found with this pregnancy, I just couldn't fault them. Everything just goes so smoothly. I've never had to wait for anything. Even my 20 week scan, I was in and I hadn't even taken my coat off and they were calling me. So I'm just so, so impressed with the service I've been given and everyone gets this treated the same. Um, And, you know, it also got me thinking, like in maternity hospitals, they cannot choose to cancel electives or delay things. A bit like what's happening now because of COVID in our main acute hospitals. They're trying to cancel maybe elective surgeries like hip replacements and things they feel could wait a little bit because we're getting a big surge. But in maternity, they can't. And like now we're getting all these COVID babies, they could be completely overwhelmed. They could have, you know, absolutely... 20 or 30 percent more pregnant or deliveries this month but they'll never know but they can't turn anyone away so if you think about it 
they can be out the door busy, but every baby gets delivered and every mum gets seen and everyone gets a bed and everyone gets a delivery suite. And like that is really, really difficult. And I don't think they get the credit they deserve for that. Be it public, private or semi-private, they're all in one hospital and they just don't know. They cannot schedule all these births. You just walk in going, I'm in labour and they have to look after you, you know. So I can understand why sometimes maybe everyone's squeezed into a bay because they've had loads of deliveries and other times it's quiet and it's just look at the draw. But like, it just really made me think, God, they run these hospitals so well because they just have to deal with the numbers no matter what. And they do such a good job. And I don't know, it's not maybe politically correct to say this, but then I thought, maybe is it because it's run mostly by women <laughs> and all the midwives are so involved Obviously, there is doctors, of course, but compared to other hospitals, it's really midwife, nurse led, like really MDT approach. And, you know, of course, there's men involved, too, but there's a lot of women involved. And I'm like, it's just run so well. I'm like, go women, go us. And they do it for us. They do for all the women trying to have babies out there and trying to keep up with the evidence and obviously try and have as little mistakes happening as possible. But they really deserve a lot of credit. So if you're pregnant or planning on having another pregnancy or your first pregnancy and wondering what way to go, if you can afford to go fully private and especially if you're anxious or you have maybe health conditions, like go private. But if you can't, don't worry, the public is actually great. And semi-private is good, but I just have had a good few of my friends saying, God, I'd nearly go private or public, semi-private. Sometimes you feel like you belong to nobody. You're kind of out in a prefab um, and not in the hospital and you don't see the same doctor. But, you know, maybe there are some benefits to it because I haven't experienced it. So feel free to put comments up about your experience and whether you would advise people to go private, semi-private, public, because I am all about public. If I ever have another baby, I'm going public. And I just want to, again, big shout out to the maternity hospitals. And during these crazy COVID times, they are not closing their doors to any of us, you know. Um, so that's all I want to say today. That's my little post for today. Um, hope everyone's keeping well in this another level five lockdown. I'm so glad and lucky to have a little pregnancy to focus on. Something happy in my life. Um, really exciting. Only, what, 10 weeks to go. So it's really nice to have something other than COVID to think about. And just keep working until t- t- 38 weeks, fingers crossed. Uh, so yeah, talk to you all again soon. Bye.